Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Yehuda Friedman, and uh, today's segment on OU Live, we have fantastic, fantastic conversation with Naftali Hoff from Impactful Coaching, who will uh, share with us some really great insights um, as we as we uh, get through this uh, pandemic when it comes to working with teams as as we're all uh, working from home and remotely. So uh, we're really grateful to have Naftali in the program. So Naftali, uh, I'll show you there. Yes, I am here, Yehuda, and I'm excited to be with you. Thank you so very much for the invitation. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us, and i um, really grateful that you're on this program. And, uh, you know, through, with your many years of uh, insights and expertise into working with many incredible organizations uh, really across the globe, you know, if you could just share with us for a few minutes, um, you know, your, your, uh, your experience um, and, uh, and uh, also how you're managing during, you know, during the whole pandemic. Well, thank you for asking. I'll sort of circle back to the first point in a moment. I thank God I'm managing fine, as is my family, though sometimes it doesn't seem that way. <laughs> we're all kind of stepping on each other's toes as we're trying to um, stay just, I guess, secure in place and, and do the right thing and at the same time function, whatever that looks like, whether we're talking about work or school or just family life. So um, I think this concept of in it together, you know, there's a piece of it that may be more relevant than others. But the part that we can all commiserate with is that we are living a very unusual life and we are trying to thrive or at least survive, but certainly thrive wherever possible in uncharted waters and do so in a way that allows us to maintain not only our stability, our scheduling, all of that, but also our mental health and, and whatnot. And thankfully, at least in the New York area, the weather is starting to turn and that is definitely helping. So getting outside, getting some fresh air has been really great. Um, to your question about my history or my background, I am a teacher turned coach or a school or uh, leader slash educator turned coach. So I spent many years in the field of education and I continue to support educators and school leaders through my coaching work. And I've also worked with business owners, executives and others, helping them in a variety of different areas with a particular focus on human skills, soft skills, understanding interpersonal dynamics and understanding leadership. So that's a little bit of my background and I've written even a book about it called Becoming the New Boss, which is a book designed for people who are new in leadership, either coming into it for the first time, as I did once upon a time and really would have benefited from some kind of guide in that process or somebody who's transitioning in leadership. So thank you again, Yehuda, for allowing me to be here and I certainly looking forward to the conversation. Oh great! Listen, I would love to touch upon the book later on. Um, I'm sure I'm sure it's filled with a lot of great uh, ideas and life experiences. But uh, as we're as we're um, as we're living through the whole COVID uh, pandemic, uh, I'm sure you're seeing on the ground a lot of businesses, a lot of organizations uh, trying to adapt to, uh, to the whole uh, crisis, uh, as we call it that. What um, you know? What are the necessary steps that uh, the businesses and organizations should be taking right now if they ha if they haven't done already? Yeah, so that's a very broad question, and it's a very important question. And I think depending on the nature of the business, the answer is going to vary. But I think one thing that is universal, especially with the whole remote component, is leaders and businesses need to be thinking about their communication, they need to be thinking about interacting with their own people as well as with their clients and customers in a remote manner different than before. So what's fascinating is that we communicate very differently. We understand this intuitively, but there's a lot of research around it that communication looks and feels very different when we are away from the office and we're communicating virtually. So I think that one of the key pieces is making sure that our communication is strong making sure that our relationships are strong, making sure that people are being properly supported through the crisis, that the leaders in particular are stepping up and saying, I don't really know where this is going more so than anybody else, but I'm here to support you as best as I can. And I think that in the process of being empathic, understanding people's challenges, helping them work through the issues of work-life balance and having the kids at home and being a little bit off schedule and productivity is not quite what it used to be when everybody's one cubicle away or one wall away from each other. Recognizing that in this new normal for however long it lasts, that we're going to do things a little bit differently, but it's all in the spirit of trying to help each other get through this and do so in a way that will support our businesses. Because again, we have to be nimble 
we have to be flexible, we have to think a little bit differently and recognize that we don't even know when this is going to end. So being strong on the relational side, I think is critical. And then of course, other pieces will start to fall into place and work themselves out. So in a, in a uh, typical uh, office office setting, uh, everyone loves to say the, uh, the water cooler chatter, the water cooler talk, you know, what happened, uh, how was your Shabbos, how was the weekend, did you see the sports game? And then that could lead to informal informal opportunities to uh, to collaborate. Um, so, being that we're all working from home, uh, is there is there any way, uh, or rather, what the you know what ideas suggestions do you have to keep the, to keep that cultural collaboration uh, uh, alive and going? Yeah, great question. So, first of all, I think even in person, we could do be we could be doing more and be more purposeful in terms of engendering community and conversation. So yeah, the water cooler could certainly be a default way for that to occur. But I would even say, you know, a business or an office, for example, that has a morning huddle where everybody comes together for a few minutes with a particular agenda in mind. Sometimes it's good in welfare. You know, how are you doing? What are your challenges? As well as a debrief on specific work-related projects that you are working towards. What are, you know, and, and, and giving updates and things like that that is a great way to create connection and community. And that can be done virtually as well, Yehuda. So you could be getting on the call every day at let's say nine o'clock for 10 minutes. Everybody goes around, shares what it is that they're up to. And then of course they could find opportunity to share more personal matters as well as appropriate. So I think it's a conscious leadership. One of the things that I'm noticing here just in general, maybe even looping back to where we were before, is that leadership previously on some level may have been a default for some people. You know, we have a business, we have things to do. So yeah, I'm the boss and yeah, I got to run things, but I'm not necessarily being mindful or strategic about my leadership. I'm just doing my job and making sure everybody else is as well. So it almost has more of a managerial standpoint or managerial perspective. But now that we're not in the same setting, I need to think differently. Are people understanding what I'm sharing? I can't read their body language in the same way. I don't have the same opportunity to interact. So being purposeful about communication, about relationships, about community, all of those things will help your business. So, so being, what does it make sense in this, in this culture since we're, since we're not connected uh, in person in one, in one uh, office environment, um, should we, you know, you know, should we be over communicating, under communicating? What's that? What's that balance? How do we, how do we properly strike, strike that balance? Because we're all inundated uh, with, with messaging from, from text to emails to WhatsApp to, to Zoom calls, Zoom meetings. Um, you know, is there, it, does a balance, you know, exist? It's a good question, and again, I think it's going to vary a little bit place by place. But I would say. If you're looking to share information, certainly at the beginning, to over-communicate is better than the opposite because you'd rather give too much information than too little. But at the same time, I think it's very healthy and appropriate for people to be saying, how is our communication? Are you getting the information that you need? And this, again, is true in, in, in real life, so to speak, you know, in physical proximity, in an office place, and it's certainly true in a virtual environment where you want to get feedback about the processes that you're involved with so that people feel supported and in position to do their very best work. So that is what we might call top-down communication, where I want to share you know, next steps in our processes, project goals, things like that. But if we want to communicate in a smaller setting, one-to-one -one or one-to-few, um, there I would say it's gonna look different for every situation and, and understanding what a person's preference is. First of all, I happen to be a big believer in being concise. I believe that less is more when it comes to communication. It's also about a personality style. So there's something called true colors, which is one of the many leadership um, systems, let's call it out there, that analyzes personalities based on colors. And in this particular case, a green, which is how I self-identify, tends to be more task-oriented. I'm not so much the touchy-feely, fuzzy type of personality. I don't necessarily see relationships as the gateway to performance. But I recognize that there are others who do. 
And so I, as a leader, would need to recognize what other people need from me in order to feel valued, in order to feel like the communication is strong. And sometimes you want to just go back and mirror what other people say, check for understanding, ask if they got it, and ask them, based on what I said, what do you think are your next steps? So it's going a little bit further than communicating as in, I'm going to throw it out there to the ether and hope that it resonates and hope that it sticks. I'm going to actually check to make sure that people got it and that they're really clear on what their next step action items are. Because that's when you know that communication goes to a deeper place and really is going to drive people's activities and the performance, which is really what we're all looking for. Can you, uh, can you, can you uh, also share with us, uh, share with the viewers more information about your book and um, actually you tell us to, and, uh, and, uh, actually, where can we find it? Yeah, okay, so I'll just pop it up here again for everybody to see. It's called Becoming the New Boss, and uh, I wrote it a couple of years ago because it was the kind of book that I felt I could have used when I first started in school leadership, but it's for leaders of all stripes. And as you know, Yehuda, leadership is a different animal than anything else, really, in interpersonal relationships. And you could be really good in a second-tier role, but the second you become responsible for others not just their performance, which is more of a managerial role, but in providing vision and inspiration and guidance and the big picture thinking that leadership is really tasked on doing, you need to be thinking very differently. It's like moving from me to we, right? So until now, it's been all about me, 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 kind of growing my, rep, my, my reputation, building my brand, letting people know that I exist and demonstrating capacity so that I can get promoted. Now, finally, I'm here and I got promoted. Now, what do I do? And the other issue is that so many leaders fail because they struggle at the very beginning. Think of it almost like the first 100 days of a president. So the first 90 days, which is a business quarter, it's, a, it's an annual quarter, is when we're typically judged. And um, I think it's Michael Watkins who talks about the first 90 days, that if you don't succeed there, the likelihood is that you're not going to have sustained success. So I, I wrote it with that spirit in mind, recognizing that leaders of all experience levels would benefit from it. And it's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all uh, virtual e-sellers. Um, and yeah, it would be, it'd be great for, for folks to pick up a copy and of course, let me know what they think. Yeah. What have you been seeing um, is, the, is, the, is the biggest challenge you know, that your clients are facing right now during, uh, you know, during this pandemic? So a lot of it is stress and anxiety. You know, I think people are just managing more than they've been asked to do before. You know, it's like one thing when I leave my house for better, for worse, it may not be fully tidy, but I walk out of it and I head to the bus or I take the train and get in my car and I'm off to work. And when I'm at work, I'm at work and it creates some boundaries for me. Now I've got to work. I've got to manage my kids, you know. Uh, school work. I've got to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of other issues. I don't necessarily have the support I typically have. I can't get around as easily as I typically do. And frankly, my financial situation might be a mess. And I have no idea when all of this is going to end. And when you add all of that up, and sometimes companies are furloughing or scaling back personnel, and you're being asked to fill in for multiple folks, all of these things are huge stressors for people. So the ability to manage stress, to understand what its triggers are for you, how it manifests physiologically and otherwise, and taking steps, whether that's self-care, you know, getting outside, exercising, sleeping properly, eating nutritious foods, all these things are going to make a difference. Davening, you know, meditation, et cetera, all of that will contribute to a person's well-being, which is critical because if your core is not in a good place, everything else is going to suffer. But if you are strong from the inside, then you can be an anchor uh, for everyone else. And I think that that's a critical mindset to be approaching as we continue through the pandemic to figure out a way forward. And I just will mention, maybe we can link this up. I do happen to have a free ebook available on my website called, um, I'm, I'm slipping on the exact title of it, but it's basically managing workplace stress, getting a handle on workplace stress. So folks are, are, are welcome to download it because it's got a lot of practical tools that are relevant for, for regular business life and certainly for Corona. You can also share with, uh, share with the viewers some, uh, some tips and tricks uh, for mental health. And um, I mean, at the same time, you know, we've seen uh, these types of pandemics uh, make or break people. So leaders also thrive and shine. Uh, during times of crisis. 
They do. Yeah. They absolutely do. And I think there are some people, you know, sometimes we have this perspective that the entire world is sinking. It really isn't true. A lot of people right now are doing better than ever before. And it's not just because they're in a perfectly positioned industry where everybody needs their business, you know, their product, their service, et cetera. Some people have that. But some people are just taking advantage of the opportunity to learn, um, to fill the void that the market has created and to learn, you know, to to really build themselves and demonstrate um, strength at a time when people are looking for it. So there's a lot of upside here, a lot of potential. And when it comes to mental health, I think one of the things we want to think about is what is the worst case scenario? You know, sometimes when things start to snowball, there's kind of like this cascading effect. And, and, and we start to look at, again, our finances, we look at our relationships, we look at our inability to travel, whatever disruption we have dealt with now, and there's so much of it, and it starts to compound and it has this compounding effect and we, we can't extract ourselves from that process. But if we can say to ourselves, you know, what's the worst that can happen over here? And how can I find at least minimally some steps that are going to move me in the right direction, we could build a positive momentum as well. So I would encourage everybody to be thinking about, uh, you know, what is the opportunity on the other side of uncertainty? So we're living in uncertainty, we have difficult times, but there's opportunity there always. And if you can't find a way out on your own, that doesn't mean you are incapable, it doesn't mean that you are weak or anything of the sort. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing the opportunity for ourselves, but we're really good at seeing the opportunity for somebody else. So that might mean joining up with a group, it might mean having conversations with others, it might mean finding a mentor, Every situation is different, but we can, through the collective power of our community, of our peers, of people at work, of people in our family, we can be there to support each other, and we can be there to share ideas that are going to move us forward when sometimes we can't find that avenue or that pathway for ourselves. It's a, it's a very refreshing and healthy perspective uh, because uh, whatever, whatever situation we're generally in, we, you know, we like to... Uh, project it onto the future. So if a person's happy, they'll say, I'll be happy forever. Or if, I'm, or if, or if they're on a ride, I'll say, yeah, you know, this is, a, this is a terrible situation. I'm going to be in this forever. But actually flipping, you know, flipping it and saying, okay, well, what's the worst case scenario? Um, you know, playing everything out, uh, you know, and, and, then, and, then, and then a person can really walk and then and a person can really examine it through that, actually through that lens. It's actually, uh, it's actually quite helpful. Yeah. Um, from uh, from a from a from a health from from a from a mental health perspective, um, you know, are there like simple tips? Like I know I know some people say, you know, just get outside and ride a bike, um, you know, just go for a walk. Um, you know, have you have you been finding that your clients um, have benefited from that? You know, you know what are your absolutely? Offers? And I would say if I could add to it, Yehuda, let's also remember gratitude. It's a critical piece. You know, we have the opportunity every day when we daven, especially in Modim to just go through some of the ways that we have seen. I just saw a post yesterday about this, about we have opportunity to to count the various elements just in a day-to-day basis, little things that are going well for us. You know, as we were struggling to deal with Pesach and all the challenges of being home and all of that, um, it was difficult for a lot of people. We kept reminding ourselves, we're all together. You know, my wife, myself, my children, we're all enjoying the Yom together. Think about how many people have to do it without family. Or think about how many people are dealing with it without the best of health or other conditions that were going on. And that's just one example. But going outside, appreciating nature, appreciating your health and what you have the ability to do, thinking about times that you were saved from what you perceived at the time was a really big deal and a difficult situation, maybe even a crisis, and you got through it. When we recognize our resilience, when we recognize the gifts that we have, and we recognize that there's a history. Of, of getting through difficulty, we will not only have the courage to push forward during this pandemic, but we'll actually start to appreciate the opportunity that this is providing us to see things differently. And that's one of the things that's really circulating out there, sometimes maybe even to an extreme. You know, they talk about how we'll think about this generation of we were so, let's just say, into our smartphones and we didn't communicate at all. And then all of a sudden, 
Corona came and we started talking to each other. So it's a little fairy tale sometimes, but you get the idea that we have an opportunity to look at things differently because we are forced to do so. And yet we can slow things down and say, what's really critical in our lives and what isn't. And if we focus on our health and we focus on our family, we focus on what we do have, as opposed to the things that we don't, in most cases, it's going to bring joy, contentment, positivity, and that's going to be something you can build off of. Well, Tony, really, thank you very much for the time. This was really uh, a great conversation. And uh, if you could just share with the viewers just uh, uh, you know, briefly, where can they find more information um, you know, online? Um, you know, uh, sure. You know, if, you're, if you're on social media, um, yes. you know, where they could learn more. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. So first of all, you can go visit my website at any time, impactfulcoaching.com. I did mention before that I have eBooks available for download, productivity, stress management, leadership, a whole bunch of things all available for free, a blog, a podcast. So definitely would encourage you to visit me on my website. You could also find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, all at Naftali Hoff. Please make sure to spell it correctly. Otherwise, you will not find me. And then Twitter at @impactfulcoach. And if you Google my name, you'll find articles I've written, all sorts of podcasts I've been on, lots of things, and certainly would be delighted to be able to support anyone who is listening further with the coaching and other work that I do. That's really great. Well, Natalia, thank you very much. Uh, stay safe, stay, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, and stay sane. So that's Thank it. you. You got all of them. So thank you. You that's appreciate it. it. All right. Have a great rest of the day. You too. Bye-bye now. Okay. And uh, that's our show, folks. And, uh, and thanks so much for joining us on OU Today. Have a great rest of the day.